Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. I got another question from one of my email subscribers, Nico from Greece, potentially, that I want to go through with you because it asks a really fundamental question about how we approach our rooms. Here's the question. I'm looking at buying a house and there's only one room I could use for the studio for the studio and it has a glass wall. Is that horrible for acoustics? The room is 4.7 meters by 4.9 meters and approximately 2.5 meters height with one of the long walls made of floor to ceiling glass. Single pane, one centimeter thick. Is this room going to be a nightmare to treat? Yeah, and this is, it's actually this last question that I really want to focus on in this video because it symbolizes so much about how we feel about acoustics and treating rooms and all the emotions that go with it, right? So let me dive into it. Just really quickly, Nico, for you, I'm linking a video in the card right now that talks about the window behind the speakers. I know it's not quite the same question, but the principles are the same and they will apply to your room as well. But what I really want to convey with this video is the following. And that is that there's somehow a lot of fear mongering happening in this space when we're talking about treating our rooms that I've never quite understood. I get that acoustics can be hard to grasp and a lot of it is very confusing. That's totally true. But we're only talking about improving the sound in a room here, right? We're not trying to cure cancer. We're not trying to fix climate change. This is not a life or death situation. The worst that can happen is that you put in some time and some money into your room and nothing really changes. And then you learn from the, that experience and then you do it better the next time. <laughs> That's it, okay? But it's close to impossible to break things to the extent that the room becomes completely unusable, all right? Maybe with one exception, and that is that if you plaster the entire room with pyramid foam from Amazon, right? But I don't think that any of you watching this are about to fall into that trap. You can improve pretty much any room to the point where it is workable, or in other words, where you can get your mixes to translate, where you can trust the sound, where you can learn to trust the sound to the extent that you can totally get your mixes to translate. Remember, the room that you're treating is kind of like the source material when you're mixing, yeah? So the better the source material, the better the end result is gonna be. And it takes really, 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 really bad source material for you to have to throw it all out and actually start with completely different material, yeah? You can improve just about any room to the point where you can get your mixes to translate. So whatever you're facing, whatever headaches, nightmares you're getting from a new room that you're going into, it's probably not that big of a deal, yeah? As always, focus on the things that you can do, not that one thing that you can't do. So just for the sake of argument, let me talk about what is a nightmare to treat. And I can think of maybe two scenarios. Yeah, the first one is that you're dealing with a room that isn't really a room at all. Yeah, so basically a room that doesn't have any walls. So think about kind of an adjoining space between a kitchen and a living room. Yeah, and the things that the thing that makes it so bad is first of all that there is very diff it's very difficult to get symmetry in a space like that, even local symmetry kind of around your setup. And then because of all the openings, there's hardly any space that you can use for treatment. That said, if you're willing to do what it takes, you can probably still get even that space into a, up, up to a kind of a standard up to a level where you can get your mixes to translate. Yeah. It's all about just being willing to take the steps necessary. Yeah. And Basically, I've summarized those as in my home studio treatment framework that you can get at the link in the description, right? So the other scenario that I can think of is if the room is just too small. So maybe smaller than, let's say, 12 by 15 feet, something like three by four meters, just because by the time you've put everything in there that you need to put in there, the room's basically gone. Yeah, but again, if you're willing to live with that sacrifice, if you're willing to take the steps, 
you could probably even get that room to translate. Yeah. So like I said before, there's hardly any space that you can't treat at all. In my, ex my kind of experience over the years, I've come across one single room where I said this isn't going to work. And it was literally an adjoining space to a basement. And it was about 1.5 meters deep and four meters wide. It didn't have a door. It was just kind of an opening to this like extra space. And then that person had put like a huge ass mixing desk in there that was way too big. And obviously it sounded like crap. And there was nothing I could do with the space because there wasn't any space <laughs> basically, right? So apart from those two scenarios, which are difficult, but even then not impossible, you can improve just about any room. So whatever it is you're facing in this new room, take a deep breath, download my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description, follow those steps, and you will be able to get the room to translate. All right? Good. With that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.